Math 13, 14, Tyler Junior College, section 1.5, Quadratic Equations, video 2 of 10. In the previous video, we introduced the concept of solving quadratic equations by factoring, by capitalizing on the zero product principle, which basically says if a product is equal to zero, that implies, that's what this arrow is, that implies that the first factor is zero, or the second factor is zero, or possibly both. And we took advantage of that by factoring a quadratic expression, setting each factor equal to zero, and then continue to solve, as was documented in these three steps. But there was one step left blank, the first one. Now what is that first step? Well, take a look at this example and see if you can tell me. Solve 3x squared equals 14x plus 5. So, should we factor? Well, the answer is not yet. Because the zero product principle starts out by saying if a product is equal to zero, this is not equal to zero. Factoring is useless in this context if, a, if an equation is not equal to zero. So what's the first move? If necessary, comma, rewrite the equation. We'll not rewrite the equation. We will say manipulate. That's a good word here. Manipulate the equation into the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Or more succinctly, get it equal to zero. This one is not. Well, that's pretty easy to do. That's pretty easy to get equal to zero. All we have to do is move some stuff around. Now we have a choice to make. We can make the zero show up on the left by subtracting 3x squared from both sides. Or we can make the zero show up on the right by subtracting both 14x and 5 from both sides. Which one is correct? Well, technically they're both correct. So the better question is, which one is better? The answer is, knowing that you're about to factor, it will be easier if your highest power is positive. So I'm going to do the move that not only gets zero on one side, but leaves me with a positive highest power. Since the highest power is already positive, I don't want to subtract it and move it over here. It will become negative, make factoring more inconvenient. So, I will keep the 3x squared on the left side and empty out the right side by getting rid of all of its terms. Now, technically, I should write minus 14x on both sides, minus 5x on both sides, cancel everything on the, on the right, and leave a zero. But the net result of that is the terms on the right side essentially move to the left side and change their sides. That's a skill I want you to be able to pull off immediately without question. Moving terms from one side of an equal sign to the other side of an equal sign and changing the signs of those terms. So leave the 3x squared on the left, move the 14x to the left, it will change signs and become negative. Move the plus 5 to the left, which will also change signs and become negative. That empties out the right side, makes it equal to zero, and this is ready to factor. Again, factored is useless unless you're equal to zero when solving the equations. So let's factor this guy. Again, there are techniques for factoring trinomials, three-term polynomials, when the leading coefficient is not one. Please review my series of factoring videos, which will be linked either in the description of this video or in the module for this, in the, in the canvas shell for this class. But this will factor into 3x plus 1 and x minus 5. Let me double check that. And I'm double checking it by mentally foiling this back out and making sure I get the original trinomial. I will. And now it's factored. Needless to say, the factoring step is crucial. So if your factoring skills are weak, please watch the review videos over factoring. All right, we just did step two. We factored completely. Now we're in the clear. Set each factor equal to zero. 3x plus 1 is equal to zero. x minus 5 is equal to zero. 
and proceed to solve. The first equation will give us x equals negative one third. And again, if you can't do that mentally, don't. Write the steps. Subtract one from both sides. Divide both sides by three and get here. But I'll be honest, x minus five equals zero. You should be able to solve that one instantly. Add five to both sides. So our solutions are negative three and positive five. Let's take a look at one more example of factoring because, well, you can never have enough examples, but I just want to show you types of problems that have different issues. For example, the one that I'm currently erasing had an issue. It was not equal to zero. That was easy to fix. But what about this one? Where's my list of problems? Where'd it go? I erased it. Oh, there it is. I found it. Okay. <laughs> Off the screen, I have a list of all the videos I'm going to do and the examples I'm going to use in them, and I couldn't find it. But anyway, let's solve this one. Let's solve parentheses x plus 3, close parentheses, open parentheses x plus 1, close parentheses, equals what 0 would be good to put here, but I'm not putting that, 4x minus 46. I invite you to pause the video and see if you can solve this one. I'll give you a hint. It's not equal to zero yet, so this factorization on the left is completely useless, and not only that, it's in the way. It needs to be disposed of by boiling. So pause the video and see if you can solve this one, then resume. Did you pause the video? Why not? Now it's a good time to practice. I'm about to show you the answer. Pause the video and try to beat me to the answer. I'll wait. Okay, if you're not gonna pause the video, then there's no need for me to wait. Some of you may have paused it and worked it, and that's awesome. All right, so move number one, if necessary, manipulate the equation into the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. As was mentioned, the factorization on the left is completely useless to us because our equation is not equal to zero, so we have to bust it open. And by bust it open, I mean foil it or distribute or whatever phraseology you want to use. But if you were to multiply all this out, and I'll just write foil as a reminder, you would get x squared plus 4x plus 3 is equal to 4x minus 46. Now we're ready to move pieces around. That's what distributing and foiling does. It frees up terms so that you can move them around and combine like terms as necessary. But we have a decision to make. Do we want the zero on the left or the zero on the right? That decision should be driven by the highest power and making sure it ends up positive. This one's already positive. We don't want to move it. It's going to stay on the left. So everything's going on the left, which means everything is moving out from the right. To get rid of the plus, the positive 4x, I'll subtract 4x. If you're thinking, why don't I divide by 4? Because this 4x as a whole term is not part of a multiplication problem. It's part of an addition and subtraction problem. So I have to use addition and subtraction to get rid of the entire term. And while we're at it, to get rid of the minus 46, plus 46 on both sides. Well, this isn't turning out the way I wanted it to. Hmm. Did, did I miscopy the problem? I didn't. Okay. Minor damage control. So, <laughs> you know what? We're going to solve this one because even though it's not what I wanted, it's a good example to show you the factor and won't always get the job done. And it'll be a good transition in the into the next technique. Wow, a mistake that was actually better than the original problem I planned. How fortuitous. All right, so if we get this equal to zero by emptying out the left side, setting up all the necessary terms to cancel, then on the left we get x squared. Hey, look, the plus 4x and the minus 4x cancel here. That was on purpose. And we get plus 49. All right, so at this point, it is um, equal to zero, and so our second move is to try to factor. So how can you factor x squared plus 49? Well, I know to foil it, I would have to get x and x. 
and you get 49, I really only have one option, well, two options, 7 times 7 or 1 times 49. The 7 and the 7 look like they might work, <coughs> but the question is, which signs should they have? Should they both be positive? Well, that would give me 49 when I multiply, but when I do the inside and outside part of foil, I get plus 7x and plus 7x, and uh, those would make plus 14x, which is not there. Oh, that's an easy problem to fix. I need one of these to be a minus, which means I needed 7 to be a minus. Okay, now, now these will cancel and the x's are gone, but that messes up the 49, because now negative 7 times positive 7 is negative 49, not positive 49. Maybe it's not 7 or 7? Well, trust me, it's not 1 and 49. Because remember, we need this cancelization to happen, and a cancellation to happen. And that'll only happen if these numbers are the same with opposite signs. But if they're opposite signs, then their product won't be positive. So we kind of reached an impasse. This setup is called a sum of squares. Sum meaning an addition problem. Squares meaning something times itself. Sometimes it's explicitly a square, x squared. Sometimes it's implied. The 49 doesn't have a square on it, but that's equal to 7 squared. Sum of squares is prime. This is not what was supposed to happen in this problem. But that's okay. Because I couldn't have planned it any better. Maybe I did plan it and forgot. Now what? Because we can't factor this guy. Go ahead and try to factor it. Good luck. I'll give you a hint. It will factor if you use a large enough set of numbers. But uh, if, we, if we restrict our factoring to real numbers, this won't factor. It is prime. No, no, no full problem will give us that as long as we only use real numbers. So two questions. What did I mean to happen? And what do we do with this? Well, let's answer the second question first. When I built this problem, and I, I'm not, well, I will turn the camera. I have nothing to hide. But when I'm setting up these videos off the screen, you don't see the work now because I've already scribbled it out. I work out certain things that I want to happen, and then I build the problem from it. And you'll see right here, I have that. But apparently I messed something up because this is not what I wanted to happen. But that's okay. But the question is now what? What did I mean to happen? What I meant to happen and this is a separate problem, so we'll just set it up real quick. Not all this, but set up what I meant to happen, which was x squared minus 49 is equal to 0. That's what I tried to make happen at this point. This will factor. This is a technique known as difference of squares. Same as the sum of squares, except it's a minus. Difference of squares. And in the series of videos over uh, reviewing factoring, this is one of the topics, and it does factor quickly. In fact, this difference of squares would factor into x minus 7 and x plus 7. If you FOIL it, I do get my negative 49. The inside and outside products do cancel, and it leaves me x squared minus 49. So this is what was supposed to happen, at which point we would set each factor equal to 0 and get two solutions, x equals 7 and x equals negative 7. But what about the problem I got us into up here? What do we do with that? How do we solve that? Well, I'll give you a hint. We already have the skills necessary to solve it, but those skills aren't factoring. So how do we solve something like this that we can't solve by factoring? I'll tell you in the next video. I love cliffhangers.